Sisyphus. Most of us are familiar, but for those who aren't, the story of Sisyphus was a Greek myth in which a man cheated death and was punished eternally for it. The gods told him that if he was able to roll a heavy boulder to the top of a steep hill, he would be granted his freedom, free to go home and reclaim his life. And so, Sisyphus painstakingly rolled that boulder within touching distance of the top of the hill. However, just mere inches from his goal, the boulder seemingly gained mass, and Sisyphus, unable to stop it, watched helplessly as the boulder rolled all the way back down the hill. Every day, Sisyphus would attempt to achieve this task, and every day, through some divine intervention, the boulder would end up right back where it started. Sisyphus would be condemned to this fate for the rest of eternity. I like to think of this myth as an allegory for the shortcomings of humanity. The experience of coming so close but falling at the last hurdle is one that's shared by everyone. And while Sisyphus's reason was divine intervention, I believe that present day humanities is the fear of failure. In fact, the fear of failure kills more dreams than, feel fair than failure itself ever could, simply because it prevents us from taking risks. It's much easier to live within the confines of society than to take a chance to create something new, to progress. But for those who are able to break through that barrier, the potential is truly limitless. Jeff Bezos quit his $200,000 a year job to open a bookstore. That bookstore will become Amazon. Elon Musk famously only had enough money for three rocket launches, all of which failed. So against the financial advice of any expert on the planet, Musk put every dime he had into a fourth rocket launch in the hopes that it would be successful. That risk turned into SpaceX. And Fred Smith was given a C on his college thesis regarding an idea for a potential startup. That idea would become FedEx. Now, these decisions sound crazy, and perhaps they were, but they paid off, turning into some of the most influential and recognizable names on the planet. But it's not about the risks themselves. That can maybe be chalked down to pure luck. It's about the mentality to take risks like those, to have the gall to create something you believe in and turn it into a phenomenon, regardless of the potential for failure. That mentality is what drove these men to the very top. That mentality is what all of us should aspire to have, driving us towards reaching our goals. I assume that everyone here wants to create an impact, leave their mark in the world on some stage. Nobody wants to be a nobody. But where many of us falter is on how exactly to achieve that. Well, think of the three names I just highlighted. What's the one thing they have in common? They were entrepreneurs with the vision to change the world. See, the neat thing about entrepreneurship is that it is extremely cut and dry. Either your idea works or it doesn't. And in order to make sure that your idea does work, you cannot walk on eggshells. You cannot fear failure. You must learn to either adopt this mentality or you will inevitably fall apart and give up. Take me for example. My freshman year, I came across some research signifying that door handles were amongst the largest spreaders of pathogens and viruses in our day-to-day -day lives. And so, some friends and I innovated a UVC-based door handle sanitizer in the midst of the global pandemic. Wanting to legitimize our innovation, we founded UVSET in August of 2020, a company with the mission to sanitize every touch and the vision of creating a germ-free society. Now, that's all well and good. We had an incredible idea, but we lacked execution. We lacked bite because I was afraid of speaking out. See, I was a shy kid who found it difficult to speak to girls at school, let alone to product designers, manufacturers, and the media as the CEO of a company. And of course, I'm still in high school, so I found it difficult to impose my authority on the grown men and women that I was interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, what if I said the wrong thing? What if they didn't take me seriously? What if this causes UVSET to fall flat on its face? Well, ironically, my fear of UVSET failing was the very catalyst of its diminishing. In fact, for the first six months of UVSET's existence, hardly any progress was made for this reason. 
it came to a point where I had, where it came to a point where abandoning the project became a real possibility. So I had to take a step back and really ask myself, was it worth it to remain in my shell? Was it worth it to pass up this incredible opportunity to help people, to potentially change the world just because I was afraid of failure? Thankfully, I chose to keep persisting on and I haven't looked back since. These days, I don't fear failure in the slightest. I probably pitch Ubisoft to over a dozen people every single month. And to be honest, most of them turn me down, saying that I'm not up to par. But all I need is for one of those 12 people to show interest, and it would have all been worth it. One success for every 11 failures. That's the life of an entrepreneur. But you take your successes and you run with them. That brings me back to my earlier point. Entrepreneurship is a profession that forces you out of your comfort zone. Whether it be venture capitalist pitches, media interviews, or even interacting with your team, you're constantly thrust into situations where you don't feel comfortable. You can either adapt or give up. The best of the best always adapt. And I assume that if you've taken the time out of your day to come here and watch this TED Talk today, you're aspiring to be just that, the best of the best. So I encourage you to pursue entrepreneurship. Identify a real-world problem, innovate a patentable solution, and try and create something with it. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that the journey will not be easy. In fact, 90% of startups fail. You'd be taking a big risk. But one advantage that you would have is that you'd be starting early. As such, you have the time to make mistakes and feel out the space before really attacking it. And worst case, you fall flat on your face, your idea completely flopping. But who cares? because now you have the experience to get up and go at it even harder the next time. I recently attended one of Kevin O'Leary's talks, and the thing that stood out to me most was when he said, investors are more likely to invest in you if you have previously failed, as that means you have the hunger to go out and redeem yourself, to create something even bigger. So don't fear failure. Expect it. Embrace it and channel it to fuel your ambition. I like to think that we're a more evolved society than the ancient Greeks. As such, I believe our version of Sisyphus would have found a way past his eternal torment. Our version of Sisyphus would have innovated a solution to get that boulder to the top of a hill. Our version of Sisyphus would be living blissfully under a cherry tree, having conquered his life's hurdle. All of us are capable of doing the same. It's simply a matter of mentality. Thank you.